Hello everyone, this is Diana and I am with Jeff. And for one more episode. Happy Thursday. <laughs> yes, happy Thursday. We have one more episode here with Do As We Do. We have a very interesting guest today, but first of all, want to welcome you back and we want to thank you for joining us today um, as to do as we do because it's not if you die correct jeff but if you live so if you have Absolutely. never if you've never really thought about that it the first time i heard that it would kimberly telling me you know it's not if you die everybody's prepared to die you know they have everything in place or they think they might you know be thinking ahead for when they pass away but you never think of the part if you don't pass away and somebody has to take care of you. And that's really, really what made me volunteer for this organization. When I started thinking about that, it's like, wow, you know, you really never think being so independent and on the go and, you know, you don't really think that you're ever going to need someone to help you. You're so used to helping others that it's really, uh, it takes you a minute to understand like, wow, this is this is something serious. So that's why we're here. And Jeff, tell us what Do As We Do is all about. You bet. Um, yeah, same reason, uh, very happy to be here. Continue uh, reaching out to uh, folks in need or just you know uh, use us as a resource to educate yourself. We're here every Thursday. Um, and so you may be asking, you know, like who is a caregiver? Um, we define a caregiver as someone who regularly helps family members and friends um, with their daily living activities because of old age or maybe a disability, a disease, uh, or a mental disorder. Um, so in our definition, we don't think of caregivers of just like moms, dads, um, homeschooling their grade school kids right now. But these are the same mom and dads who may be also taking care of their mom and dad for whatever reason. Um you know, Kimberly uh, reminds us, and we continue to remind everybody else, each day over 40 million unpaid caregivers do their work out of the goodness of their hearts. We believe both caregivers and their loved ones deserve to live uh, confidently and happily, but there's a problem. Uh, they may be thrust into this unexpectedly. Uh, they're likely unpaid. Um, they may be uncertain or insecure about the decisions that they face. Uh, they may feel alone or overwhelmed uh, or not live anywhere near their loved one that they're caring for. So, And, th and th this is something unknown. Like the unknown is always so scary and so challenging because it's overwhelming. Once you know something, it becomes easier. And that's the reason why we're here to educate. Absolutely. The, the, I mean, these are the reasons Do As We Do was formed. Um, it was the purpose of helping and supporting these caregivers so that they're better uh, prepared to th thrive one day at a time. And so we are working uh, to continue to come uh, with lots of resources, provide you know consistent education on topics that we think are meaningful, and provide support to this community um, for the resources they need. Uh, we also have our caregiver relief fund. Uh, you can find that on our website, doaswedo.org. Uh, and our goal is to provide financial assistance to those caregivers in need. Um, so we have um, the relief fund was formed back in um, March, and we've been really focused on rental assistance. Um, you know, caregivers that it's not helping them solely with their rent, but you know, maybe you know, maybe they're coming up a little bit short on utilities or groceries or, you know, we just don't want them to have to think about some of those financial trade-offs that are so important um, to living a healthy life. So uh, we do also have an application process. So if you're listening today and, and some of this touches home, uh, we, you know, we do have an application that's live on our website. Um, so by all means, please reach out to us and we'd love to see if we can help in that way. So definitely and don't forget look we have our viewers thank you so much we we already have them sending in comments so that's the next thing make sure you send us your comments your questions today is going to be a very very interesting topic a technology topic so make sure you're ready laura thank you so much for always supporting the show absolutely and laura we love you Yes, we're sending you lots of love. <laughs> <laughs> so we also want to thank our sponsors really quick for making this happen and supporting us and supporting everything that we do behind this. Um, and I don't want to take any more time. 
unless I'm missing anything, I want to introduce our next guest. He has built an app to help dementia patients. And, you know, I might not even be saying it correctly, but I'm going to put it in the most layman's terms. It's like a Siri <laughs> for your loved ones. But I may, I, I, I may be getting it wrong, but I think her name's Iris instead of Siri. But <laughs> <laughs> let me introduce Rashawn. Welcome, Rashawn. And you tell Hello, everybody, us more, you, you give yourself all the glory and the justice that you deserve because I probably didn't do a great job at it. <laughs> No, that was actually fantastic. Um, so our chatbot's name is Iris, you're correct. And actually it was recently pointed out to me that it is just Siri spelled backwards. Had no idea that was a I, I happy coincidence. That. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Um, but we are uh, creating a mobile application for families experiencing dementia, focused on caregivers and care receivers, um, hoping to increase as much transparency for the family unit through activity reminders, event tracking, and mood support for the caregiving, and a conversational chatbot named Iris to help the individual living with dementia get through their day uh, and keep in track with their loved one if they're living apart. So tell us a, bit, a little bit of how your grandfather inspired you to create sure. this app. Yeah, so my grandfather has been living with dementia for most of my adult life and uh, my family and myself have been caregivers for him uh, for the entirety. And it's been a really interesting experience because he uh, definitely a very intellectual man, um, very smart. And as he started to progress through the disease became a bit more stubborn, our relationship became a bit more strained um, because of that. And I really struggled to sort of understand why until the diagnosis came um, and that really helped clarify things things for me. And uh, personally, I have a lot of interest in medicine as well as tech and having the opportunity to work in that space in the past, I realized that there was a way that we could uh, make a solution. So Memories was really born out of that need. Uh, currently, I'm based in New Orleans and he's in Toronto. So being able to connect with him, keep up to date is one of the use cases that inspired this. Wow. So you mentioned you're doing this with uh, a few of your family members. Uh, is that, do you find that difficult to kind of struggle the different tasks? Like, or is this part of use of technology really helping make that easier for you and your family? No, I mean, that's a really good question. I think uh, in the early days, there was definitely some things that we would do based on our wheelhouses. For example, my mom loves to grocery shop. So my mom and grandpa would go do those sort of things. My grandpa taught me how to play poker and make paper, paper airplanes. Sorry. So oh, wow. most, yeah, most of the time that I would spend with him back in the day and when I do see him now is watching the World Series of Poker in his home or, or making some paper airplanes together. So um, <laughs> definitely our relationship as a unit has changed, but having the support from everybody there has been fantastic. And tell us a little bit about your grandfather, like a little bit of his history and how you saw the decline in his health and, and or how did you how did he get diagnosed with dementia or what were some of the signs that you saw and you're like, wait, something is going on here. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, a little bit more uh, context on my grandfather. He lives with around 20 other chronic diseases. Um, he definitely has a large disease burden and dementia was one of the most recent add-ons, I would say. So understanding um, how he handles and structures his day to day was always been tough. He takes around 25 to 30 medications a day, oh, wow. which he eats structures. Uh, and then as it became more and more difficult to manage and for him to be aware, that's when things started to become a bit clearer that something may be wrong as well as um, his sort of being able to keep on track. He is very independent and he lives alone and perhaps missing appointments and other things started wow. to, to pile up. So definitely being more cognizant of that. And then most of the um, changes with my grandfather were behavioral. Um, as I mentioned earlier, that was a lot of what started to really clue us in. Um, and that pr progress is still definitely um, been going on over the last couple of years. Uh, he does have some support from us and a great team of physicians, but a uh, very large disease burden. Well, it's just impressive to hear that he lives alone. Like, mm -hmm. oh, wow, like this is app. It, this app is really making a difference. How how was his lifestyle before the app? What what changes have you seen or just even the, the whole part of taking so many meds and keeping up with that? How was he keeping up with them on his own or who was checking up on him, a caregiver? <laughs> Yeah, so um, at various times, um, my grandfather does get different caregiving individuals come in or support from different uh, like disability resources to help him either. Um, I, I know he gets credits to take a taxi to and from appointments and other things um, to be able to support him. A lot of um, early days in management has been around medication uh, and ensuring that he has a good schedule around it. Um, there were some situations of sort of inspired memories where um, he would go to a new pharmacist and get something new, a new vitamin or something of the sort, and there would be an interaction and he would be unsure. Yeah, um, that's very thankfully. scary. That's very yeah. scary. Or double medicate something that's yeah. really strong right. throughout the day. 
Yeah, absolutely. So I think um, a lot of the um, early sort of um, inspiration of memories came from him. And as he continues to progress with the disease, he's actually, I do run um, some ideas by him in terms of features that would make sense. It's very interesting. My grandfather has run through maybe five or 10 different smartphones over the last couple of years, um, totally depending on what he likes in terms of functionality or not. Sometimes he's very trying to use the phone and then a service like Memories works and sometimes he's not. And he's very reliant on his home phone and it's mostly based on phone communication. So um, it's definitely a new experience every day. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Jeff. One more question. No, go ahead. Go ahead. What kind of phone is he currently using, and what did he adapt best to? Yeah, so right now he has a home phone, which he uses because he hasn't been going out a lot since the pandemic has started. He canceled his phone service. Before then, he had, I think it was an iPhone 6, um, which he had, and that was his sole like way to connect with the internet. He used YouTube a lot. Um, so he's quite religious, and he had a lot of, I would say, like religious hymns and songs that he would access. And now what he's been doing is he has a, a tape recorder, like a mobile one, and his home phone. And that's sort of his way to communicate with everyone and to hold on to the music that he likes. Awesome. That makes sense. I mean, Rashad, I, you you popped like this question in my head. Like, you know, I always seem to be called upon in the family as the tech guy, you know, from mm -hmm. a remote perspective. And, you know, I've, although, you know, I, this app sounds incredible and we want to hear more about it. Like I think about like what what has been the thought process in terms of making that extremely useful for them and, you know, knowing that this, you know, these these types of medical concerns hit the elder population like do you like that's obviously could be a barrier of entry or what what aspects have you guys taken to make that really accessible sure no, that's a fantastic question so i think um there's a few points that i'd like to touch there one uh, that informs all of our design as a company is that i like to say we're a tech company that's looking to make an impact in the health space it's very different from a lot of the companies that you see in this arena where usually it's a lot um, of older physicians for example who have had the opportunity to learn about an issue or a pain point and recruits talents and works backwards towards a solution that's not something i wanted for us to happen um, i had the opportunity to work with a lot of fantastic folks in the tech industry and have have, um, through memories been able to learn a lot about caregiving uh, the space and a lot of folks who are everyday caregivers. Um, so we've been united by that passion and that um, love for technology to make accessible, um, easy to use with, a, uh, I would say, caregivers and care receivers in mind in terms of our design. So a lot of the copy that you see on our website, a lot of the wireframes and some of our beta testing is really focused on accessibility. Um, and then in terms of the two folks that we're looking to support, that's the caregivers and the care receivers. Those are actually two very different individuals. So the caregiver is definitely facing, as we know with this organization, mental burdens, physical burdens, as well as financial that continue to um, arise and will continue to grow during their caregiving journey. Um, a lot of the times it's realizing that they do need support and making that available, um, putting themselves at an equivalent level and understanding that I do need to to take some time for self-care and realizing that. So a lot of current version of memories in our product roadmap is as many tools that we can provide as possible for the caregivers to automate their caregiving responsibilities and then using mood and emotional support through Iris to help them get through the day. And for the care receiver, initially the early individuals living with cognitive impairment, perhaps progressing into dementia or Alzheimer's may still have some smartphone access. And that's what our beta version is really targeted towards those who can interact with it, but the disease does progress. There can be plateau periods and things can get very serious very quickly. So most of the future of what Memories is building is a lot of voice and a lot of integrations where we try to place the individual at the center of their own care um, using an internet of things sort of approach with smart home speakers or other things, as well as using peripheral integrations, whether that's a wearable to ensure that they haven't fallen, collecting wow. any sort of bio data or surveillance feedback for the care receiver and allowing using whatever tech that we can provide to add some benefit to these individuals. A lot of the things we've seen is music that does um, provide a lot of support for an individual living with dementia. So even if we're just a streaming service for them, um, wow. yeah. that would be best case for us. So it's two different approaches. Yeah, no, I love the you know, like as you talk through it, like all these check marks and light bulbs are going off in my head because I'm I know. Thinking, like I, I was thinking very basic from just like the app perspective, but you know, you guys have, you know, knocked it out of the park and thinking about how you can layer in multiple versions of tech that, you know, wouldn't necessarily require their interaction, but is still achieving that same goal. So that's, that's awesome. Thank you, Brian, for that comment. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, Rashawn, you it. have a really powerful story and an incredible mission. We have one more comment and we'll save the rest of the comments for the end, but they are blown away with an amazing tool. Thank you, Laura. So uh, let's talk about music because music plays a very, very important role 
in energy and memory overall, especially in dementia patients, Alzheimer patients. So tell us uh, some of the research that you've done uh, learning how music really, you know, the binary frequencies and all these different sounds that really, really help the mind. Sure. Um, I, I totally agree. I think music and mindfulness are two things that really yes. um, have a fantastic and profound effect on individuals right now, especially those living with cognitive decline. Um, I think there's an interesting way to approach this where um, a lot of the atrophy and a lot of the associated morbidity along with dementia does affect memory, um, their ability to interact as well as a secondary systems you see are depression and apathy. Um, so a lot of different areas of the brain do become affected outside of memory. And I think having the opportunity to listen to music or to take some time to really be mindful unlocks this other side of the brain, unlocks the creative side, I think that's the perfect word. It unlocks. It's a... It unlocks. Absolutely. And I think that um, it, it's a really unique opportunity as well to start playing music for an individual. There's two ways, I think, to approach this. There's one fantastic organization I'll call out called Chords for a Cause, which we're partnered with, and they create dementia-friendly content, which is music produced, slowed down, and verbalized as they go through. And they share that with a long-term care facility to be able to have that support. We're looking to integrate them into our chatbot and that version of the application. Um, and I think that as an individual progresses and they start to lose a little bit of more about who they are currently, they do, they do still remember who they were before, some of their earliest memories and playing music from decades earlier, for example, a lot of our caregivers have said that's been fantastic. When they're able to know that their loved one has had a good day, it's because they're bopping along to a music from maybe the 40s or 50s or 60s, something that they really loved and being able to provide that, some, that support through technology why wouldn't we want to do that? <laughs> yeah. that's, power, that's powerful because, um, you know, memory recalls, it, it, it brings old DNA back. So like you can have health, it could produce healthy DNA if you're experiencing a good memory. So transporting you back, the easiest way is through music, like smell, uh, you know, so, some, a memory might bring you back. But one of the main things that like transports any of us automatically is that one jam that you remember <laughs> that takes you back to a certain spot. You could smell, taste, like everything. So I think that's extremely powerful to, I, I hadn't even thought about that, how you take them back to a certain era that they enjoy that music. Yeah, and I think that really lends to um, a really great point about like sort of memory formation and exactly as you're you're talking about the integration of the senses and other things. I mean, personally, I'm a med student and this has always been an area of fascination for me. Memory, cognition, neuroscience is something that I've always been interested in. But I think um, as you start to appreciate how most of those long-term memories are made, all of the different interactions that happens when you're experiencing something, the the lights, the smell, everything around that, the That's situation right. and context factors, absolutely. And I think so for memories and Iris specifically, where we hope to take the product um, is to have more personalized recommendations and learn more about the individual as we continue to speak with them. If Iris is speaking to my grandfather, for example, and he really recalls this great memory and that's something that he enjoyed, maybe it was something that we did together a few years back, Iris, as we're building, will understand that this is something that provide some value, we'll prompt this conversation again. Whenever my grandfather reaches out and says that he's not feeling great or is feeling lonely, um, then we have that opportunity to do that. And the amazing thing with tech is that there's no conversation fatigue at all. It can have a repetitive conversation. It can be there for support whenever needed. Um, and I think that's really exciting. Because some of the frustration um, from individuals, just human beings, is like, I already told you that, or, you know, and that's something you cannot ever tell a dementia patient. But when you don't know what's going on, you're like, I already told you the frustration can come, but with technology, repetition, repetition, like it, it really doesn't fatigue anybody. That's super interesting. Rashawn, um, so obviously the app is is doing several different um, uh, helpful traits or or tasks. Like, how did you kind of determine what you wanted to focus on first? Like, and and why? Like, why the activity reporting or other features? No, that's fantastic um, to bring up because I think a lot of, um, especially early entrepreneurs, for example, who would like to to make an impact, and especially if they've identified a problem that they're passionate about, there's just so much things that you want to do, and that's really yeah. the a work in progress is the enemy of success, for example, because yeah. you do need to stage things. Um, and I think for us, there's a couple things. I have some amazing checkpoints in the form of our team. Um, they do a fantastic job of corralling in myself when I have some crazy ideas or things that we'd like to do. And <laughs> what makes the most sense logically. 
ideally. Um, I do fully believe in sort of radical transparency, which is being very clear about the skills that you don't have. For me, it's uh, an actionable next step and it's looking at tech realization if this idea makes the most sense. So us recruiting some really great developers has been fantastic for us and some great business development folks. Um, however, with that in mind, uh, something that I do love about tech is the scalability and the design for the future. So I know that everything that we're doing with memories is geared towards scalability because dementia is something that's very important to me, something that's a part of our family, but caregivers all over the world um, care, provide care for things other than dementia, for chronic disease management, for traumatic brain injuries, for hip injuries, all sorts of different kinds of support. So us focusing on a product that has functions that are scalable for caregivers of all sorts of different backgrounds has really been key for us. And the core um, tasks that I think a lot of caregivers do is ensuring that meds are completed, ensuring that their loved one has made it to an appointment and having an understanding of what happens. And then the next step of us and why we're doing beta testing is because we've been lucky enough to amass a team that is really passionate about this and we have in-house development talent, we would like to essentially design an application for caregivers by caregivers. All of their feedback will design and iterate and sort of reflect what the future of memories will be. And that's really exciting to me as well. So let me ask you, for instance, Kimberly, which is uh, the founder of Do As We Do, she is a long distance caregiver to her mother suffering from dementia. Um, how, how would she utilize this app? She's currently using Alexa and technology to communicate with her mom daily and, you know, to keep to keep tabs on her and see what she's doing. Um, how would this app benefit like Kimberly? Like how could she utilize this app? Absolutely. So um, it's very similar to our core model where Kimberly can be using the caregiver side of the application, um, entering in all of the things that her mom needs to do, reminders, even things like going for a walk, making sure that there is some exercise or taking some mindfulness moments, and then creating a photo album of shared memories that they love in case um, her mother gets stressed or would like to share that information, producing all of that on her end, and then being able to review completion. And Kimberly's mom, I'm unsure of her tech capability right now. If she is able to use a smartphone, then she would have the opportunity to interact with our core version of memories through Iris um, and be able to be prompted on, okay, it's 30 minutes minutes before I have to get ready for dinner, I'm going to start getting the food ready. Um, or, you know what, I, I haven't been feeling amazing today. Hey, Iris, this is what happened in my day. That information gets recorded and Kimberly is notified. Um, now, if things are progressing, for example, maybe um, her mother doesn't have smartphone access. That's where we're going in the future with uh, integrating with the Alexa that she may have to be able to have a voice version of memories. Um, and then the other side to this is we're also piloting a caregiver only application. So if Kimberly's uh, mother, for example, is living uh, with very severe dementia, Alzheimer's, perhaps nonverbal, but she is spending some time at the home with Kimberly. The caregiver only version has the opportunity to set up the same reminders to ensure that Kimberly remembers to feed her mom, that she remembers to give her those medications. And then Iris will reach out to Kimberly and say, hey, it's been a busy day. Have you had the opportunity to check in on your mood? How are you feeling today? And gather that wow. information. Perhaps at the end of the week, Kimberly can see, wow, it's been an okay week. It's been a fantastic week. It's been a tough week. I'm going to take some time for self-care today. That's powerful because yeah. that's, caregiving can kill the caregiver. <laughs> so that's very, very powerful. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I also was going to ask you, which you brought it up, was uh, so the photos. So you can build these photos of memories along with the songs and kind of take them back to that good happy place or those good memories is that what what you say so when you integrate the photos there's definitely tiers to how we want to do this. So the start of this is photos and building that memory album of like uh, images and things that you've done with your loved one. So for example, if um, Kimberly's mom reaches out to Iris and says, I feel lonely, then Iris will send a photo that Kimberly updated to um, her mother's phone. So she has the opportunity to see that. Hopefully in the future, as we continue to develop, we'll include videos, we'll include the opportunity to directly call your loved one through FaceTime, for example, or something similar, and then share whether that's music, whether that's a note directly from Kimberly saying, hey mom, this may be a stressful time for you. It's time for you to take your medications or it's time to do this. Really, um, I would say, anything is possible in terms of what it is that we would like to build, whatever the caregiver wants. That's the goal for us. We would love for anyone who um, is going to be testing and anyone can beta test our application, feel free to completely rip apart the application. Tell us the one thing that you like. If there's anything, hopefully there's a lot more than there's one. There's a lot of, I, I <laughs> already know a lot of things that I like. <laughs> <laughs> but worst case scenario, let's say there's none, but you tell us everything that you want and we will work with you to get there. That's powerful. Yeah. I mean, what a, what a great tool we've, you know, we've had, um, 
I think we're over tw probably close to 20 people on these uh, these various segments. And technology is one that we've been wanting to spend some time on. And so, you know, we're so glad that we connected with you uh, through our social media platforms to kind of learn about this, but ultimately like how technology can be so helpful uh, in these uh, in everyone's lives from this particular aspect of caregiving. So yeah. um, I think there's one thing that I'd like to say to you on the topic of technology here is that um, something that we're really focused on as a company is ensuring that our tech is accessible. I think initially everybody thinks you're making tech, it's a scalable, easy solution. Everybody can have access, but that's not really how things work. Most designs, most beta testing, a lot of stuff happens to a very homogenous population in North America, the same people getting to see a lot. Um, and there hasn't been enough work being done in to ensure that diverse populations have tech that's accessible, making sure that the media and everything that we're portraying, all of the copy, everything that go is going out there is understandable and it's easily accessible and that people feel represented in the design and everything that we're doing. So a lot of our social media efforts, a lot of what we're doing and what I urge other tech companies to do is to make sure that you are doing your part to ensure that your population is heterogeneous, that you're looking for the unpaid caregivers um, that are minorities and that need even more support and making it an active part of your mission to get tech to the people who need it. And that that's one of my personal missions is to explain things so simply that no one will be intimidated because they haven't been able to use it or touch it and that they get the desire and the opportunity to learn about it because it's so simplified. It's, and it's accessible to everyone, but when you don't understand something, it feels overwhelming. So that I, I love that. I love that. Thank you. Thank you for letting me say that around this platform. I appreciate it. No, I, I appreciate you. Yeah, interjecting that because it's 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 what a lot of people don't think about from that aspect is the accessibility. Um, and so, you know, having that as your mindset and as part of your mission of your company, you know, certainly um, is is very appreciated. Um, and shows a lot of kindness, and that's what the world needs, a lot more kindness um, and willing to help and lift each other up. So I think it's a very powerful app and uh, we can't wait to test it, really, like, um, and, and for to push it and to, and to really get you some caregivers that are gonna use it and really test it out. I think with this platform, we could definitely find some unpaid caregivers that are Yay. that are really going to use it and utilize it correctly and you know you may learn something from it and they will definitely learn and and help their loved ones as well Okay, amazing. If you anybody would like to test that at our application, which we would love, absolutely, feel free to check out our website, www.memories.ca or .co, um, and you can sign up on our waitlist link and we'll release the application to you. Also, in case anyone has any questions about caregiving, would like to learn more about the company or would like to chat, I'm always available. I can be reached at 504-478-0397 and I'm happy to chat. Perfect. Now tell us some of your experiences. What mm -hmm. recommendations as a caregiver, as a young caregiver, because you, you were also a caregiver to your grandfather. Um, mm -hmm. Tell us something that, you know, you learned along the way that you would do better now if you yeah. had to do it again. Absolutely. Um, thanks for asking me that. Um, I think this has really been one of the, the biggest opportunities for personal growth for me is uh, realizing what it means to be a young caregiver. I think, um, and I'll definitely generalize here, um, but there are individuals, especially as you are growing, as you're going into your late teens, your 20s and early 30s, for example, a lot of those times is your building years. It's the opportunity to really invest in yourself, to set yourself for the, up for the future. Um, and you are very protected of your time. You are really cognizant of what you're doing with that and um, sort of where all of your resources are going. And I think uh, the caregiving burden can accumulate very quickly um, and understanding that and seeing how your life can change, that can be really harrowing and tough for individuals. So I think realizing that you don't need to self-isolate, that there are people and tools out there that um, that will support you, that your friends, for example, may be there to support you. Maybe instead of just not going to a couple events, it's communicating why you can't. And maybe somebody will reach out and offer you some support. I think a lot of that independence that comes with a young age really is detrimental um, in terms of building that caregiver community. Um, I think also so bridging the gap between some of the older demographics of caregiver and youngers is something that technology and platforms like yours and ours will continue to do to ensure that there's knowledge translation instead of segregation. Um, yeah. And I think 
there was a lot of humility that I needed to develop here. A lot of the, the stubbornness that I mentioned of my grandfather was passed on to me. I'm a very stubborn individual. And I think us having a lot of disagreements as I was developing and growing up, um, I really didn't rationalize why this was happening. It was just more conflicts in my family. Me taking a moment to realize this was the progression of my grandfather's disease. This is me needing to be more aware of how I interact with everybody on an everyday basis, really pushed me to try to make a solution even faster. So um, it's definitely been a learning experience. I'm full of faults in terms of how I handled caregiving in the beginning, but I do appreciate that this is a journey um, and that I hope we can support people. Yeah, and, and you, have, you have to be easy on yourself. It's, yeah, it's, it's and your learning are so impactful. I mean, what you said about these are your building years, I mean, that's what we're finding, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of focusing on the early education has been a real core of our mission because, you know, so many people put this stuff off and then it, it happens and it's almost like, you know, we got to move so quickly where the more prepared we can be for this, the better. And so like, but your wisdom around the building years and how you're protective of that time is, is spot on, but that's where we hope to kind of help break that cycle and, 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 you know, inspire people to take action early. Amazing. Yeah. It's, it's, we've learned so much. Um, we have, we've had some people tell us and, and what I love is that they're so, real about it because that's the hard part it, when you're a caregiver you hush everything you try to make it better and you know you still have 20 million things going on on this side but you know that that loved one needs you so you're going to do it regardless so it, it takes a toll on you a stress wise self-care mental health and um, can you tell us anything about like mental health and how that affects somebody uh, with so much stress yeah, absolutely. I think um, one of the biggest things that I've decided to do over the last couple of years is really ensure that I don't compartmentalize. I think that's definitely something that um, I would say I'm a prolific compartmentalizer, <laughs> which is a talent that you don't really need. <laughs> um, but I think it's something that I was able to do and use to be able to let's say, continue to build while while realizing that there's stress in my life, that I'm worried about my grandfather consistently. And I want to be able to help my parents and family support him and move forward. But I can't have all that information in my head and continue to focus on school or other things. So putting things in the boxes is a very easy way for people to move forward and to rationalize. Um, and I think it, it, it works up until a point. I think reaching out for support, whether that's friends, whether that's therapy, whether that's doing things for mindfulness, I think all of that is the right thing to do. I think uh, what I've loved to see over the last decade, I would say, is destigmatization of mental health care and accessibility of resources and communication yeah. from younger folks on why it's so essential. For me, I absolutely take some time every day where there's two things that I love to do. I love to wash dishes. That's my mindfulness moment. Where I'm completely focused on the task of hand and I sort of let things go. And then I like to just take my SIM card out of my phone, not respond to anybody on Slack, sorry team, <laughs> or respond to any messages or anything. You know my secrets now. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the things I've forced into my schedule so that I am aware um, that I do need to take breaks. And I think that goes back to why we want to have Iris for caregivers, for example, to ensure that somebody is checking in on them, to ensure that they are taking breaks and taking care of themselves. I right. think it's interesting that you say uh, washing dishes because I kind of like if my kitchen is messy, I feel like I can't move forward throughout my day. <laughs> <No>. so, <laughs> I'm like, I have a full day, but I need to go wash dishes. I need that kitchen to be clean. It's I hope you can't see my sink from here because I can't. <laughs> <laughs> something about the kitchen being dirty makes the whole house feel dirty. Exactly. So yeah. I, I, I get that. I get that. <laughs> and it's, it's an interesting comment that I can relate with you on. Yes. Well, Rashawn, we know you're a very busy individual and you're you're conquering, you know, a uh, a great need in this space. And so we are so thankful of your time on behalf of the entire Do As We Do team yeah. and, and our uh, supporters and our viewers. Um, you know, we will be sure we um, put links into uh, our social media platform so that they can, you know, check more information out about your organization and uh, and hopefully yeah, take part. Um, and so again, we were so appreciative of your insights and your time here today with us. No, absolutely. I really appreciate you taking the time to look at this from different perspectives as well, to ensure that you have some technology that you are looking for caregivers. You guys are doing a fantastic job and we're really excited to share everything that you're doing across our platforms. And thank you so much for the time. <laughs> You thank you. Thank you once again. And we'll definitely cross promote you. We'll put all your social 
media links and all of that so that people can reach out to you. They can reach out to us. Guys, if you have any questions, reach out to us, reach out to Rashawn. Um, definitely ask questions. That's what we're here for. No question is a dumb question. And, and I think that's super important to tell the world because I think, you know, knowledge is power, but it's not power unless you take action. So you can have that information, but if you don't test it, if you don't try it, you will never go to the next level. So we are here for you. Send us your questions, send Rashawn your questions. Let us know if you need support. Um, and once again, thank you, Rashawn. Your mission is amazing. And uh, we're humbled to have you on today. And this is not the first time or the last time you see him. We will be, you will be back and, and we will do more things together because awesome. we will conquer together. <laughs> <laughs> it's about collaboration and sharing knowledge, you know, like so there, somebody can have knowledge their entire life. They write a book, you absorb that knowledge in 10 minutes, an hour, whatever time it takes you, you know, decades of knowledge you can absorb. So that's what we're here for is to share the knowledge to bring. We might not have all the knowledge, but we bring resources like Rashawn and his team to share those 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 resources with you. So. Like I said, thank you once again. Thank yeah, you. thank you. Any, any final thoughts for the audience, uh, Rashawn? Um, I would say, uh, and this is a little unrelated, but I think I'll, I would definitely just high level advice for everybody here is if you're stressed out, if, if you need some support, one, ensure that you look for resources, but two, also take some time to be creative. Um, I think if you if you ever have some time for yourself, push yourself, um, look for a solution for yourself, maybe reach out for other people, I would say, uh, and to try to build something. Entrepreneurship has been the most rewarding journey of my life. Um, and I think if it wasn't for the resources, me actively trying to do something and to make a difference, I wouldn't be here right now. So, and I think everybody has those skills and talents. So. Um, Hopefully, uh, this inspires people to try. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely will. Thank you. I'm sure it will. <laughs> so, All right. so I mean, I, what, a, what a great guest to have on, Diana. Um, you know, it's 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 part of our mission to provide some of this great insight and educational resources as part of our foundation. Uh, we look forward to having more folks like him on uh, and gals for a perspective of providing these kinds of resources in the future. Um, as well as, um, you know, you already heard Diana say, leave your comments um, and we will be sure that we follow up with those. Um, also check out our website again, do as we do.org. Um, if you uh, can help support our, uh, our cause, we would greatly appreciate it uh, so that we can continue to support this community with the resources that they need. Uh, we do have our relief fund open. Uh, as I said, you can find that on our website and uh, we would love your uh, support in that. So Diana, I think you want to thank our sponsors that make all of this possible. Oh yes, our beautiful sponsors. Thank you Spherix for doing the most beautiful website and really supporting us. Uh, Approved Shield, uh, Hustle Aesthetics, I'm a Soap Addict, Salon D, Rich B, Short Productions, Blue Jay Nutra, and AK Realty. And this broadcast has come to an end. We will see you next Thursday. Do as we do. Have a great weekend, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>